Hi, everybody. I'm Todd Schubel. I'm the GIS Research Coordinator at the University of Chicago, and I'm going to be talking about a project that I'm working on with a group of colleagues uh, that you'll see here, uh, most of them based at the university. And what we're talking about is food. Everyone loves food, right? Yes, okay, you should, because there's a guy outside who had like 10 empanadas on like one plate. So, um, but a lot of this is what we're talking about is where our food comes from. Sort of, you know, where is, how is that food delivered to us? Where is it grown? How is it produced? And more to the point, how much energy is used to produce that food and how many greenhouse gases may be produced to actually produce that food. You'll see here from the display that we have, uh, transportation actually accounts for a large part of that. And this is really what we're focusing on is seeing uh, how much uh, energy or greenhouse gases could actually be limited if we used a, a more sort of localized uh, farming method, a localized food shed, as we're talking about. It's very related to uh, what you would uh, classically know as a watershed in which you're looking at the drainage of a river. In this case, you're looking at how actually food flows into a city. Uh, we started out by looking at Chicago proper, Chicago, the, the urban area of Chicago, and where its food came from. You can see there about 28% of it comes from California, Arizona, 16% uh, of it comes from Florida. And what we're talking about is fresh fruit, uh, fruits and vegetables, uh, grains, consumables of that sort. Uh, now, as you may know, it's like if you've ever driven across Illinois, there's more corn than the eye can see. Uh, it just goes on for miles and miles and miles. We have the breadbasket of you know, the United States located right there. Well, why aren't we producing more, uh, more food locally? If you look at here, uh, we have all the cultivated land shown in green in the four surrounding states uh, around Illinois and around Chicago proper. All that green is cultivated by whatever crop may be on it. Most of it, a great majority of it, is corn and soybeans. Now, if you wanted to focus in a little bit more on Chicago itself, you could actually see how much land should be uh, used for the food shed proper. And this is done by actually knowing what the caloric intake uh, should be for you know, a given population. So given a population, and you'll see there's the side flash, this is prime farmland as opposed to cultivated farmland. So this is farmland that really don't need any irrigation, any sort of uh, fancy fertilizers or anything like that added to it. Um, as I said, what we were talking about was uh, ca calculating the food shed for Chicago and the surrounding areas uh, and other urban areas in Chicago, uh, around Chicago. It look at <clears throat> excuse me, uh, is looking at the caloric intake of the population. So how many calories can be produced by an acre of land? That could then be calculated out to see how much land would actually be needed to feed that urban area. And you can see here shown in yellow, I know it doesn't show up very well with the resolution, the, uh, the area in yellow would be the area that would be needed to feed the greater population of Chicago, approximately 10 million people. You really only need about a 60 mile radius around Chicago. You'll see they're shown in pink. You'll see the areas of St. Louis, uh, Detroit, Milwaukee, uh, those areas, their food sheds as well. Now these areas may be bigger or smaller depending on how much cultivated land is surrounding it. Here's a, a little bit closer view of, of, of that. And you'll see in there in green, all of that can be land that can be used for something else, for either uh, other crops. But what we're looking at is more that sort of local economy, limiting that transportation cost of bringing in crops from very, uh, from very large distances, making a more local economy, local grown foods, uh, and it cuts down on greenhouse gases that basically you're belching into the atmosphere either by moving, th moving things by truck or by train uh, into a given urban area. So as you'll see in the next slide, we actually took that into account. So here you're looking at uh, Champaign, Illinois, that's where the University of Illinois is uh, actually based, and the surrounding communities in the county uh, looking at that food shed using our one model that we actually created. We actually created another model where we included transportation uh, in the model, and looking at transportation accessibility, access to transportation, and taking cost, uh, time as a cost into account when uh, seeing how far uh, away a food shed should be. So as here, we're just looking at a radius, you'll see in the next slide it should pop up, you'll see there it turns into a bit more of a uh, a, more, a bit more of a diamond shape uh, surrounding the urban areas. Uh, and this is uh, given by not only sort of the road class, but also the transportation cost with regards to time that it takes to travel to get those uh, foodstuffs actually to the population. So if we, uh, now this model is being built out, we're actually building a model currently that's going to cover the entire United States. So it's going to get very, very interesting when we start looking at the food sheds for cities like Phoenix, Los Angeles, Miami, and seeing how much land is actually needed to 
feed those urban areas. Uh, thank you very much.